Gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for joining this Q&A round. Uh, we have in the room uh, Fernando Ferreira of Litex, Juan Cardona of Geotap, and Andres Bohorquez of Aplus. If you have questions for those gentlemen, then please ask your question via the chat. And if you want, you can also share your audio and video, come into the tool, and then directly ask the question you always wanted to see answered. Okay? We are going to start. We have a session of around 45 minutes, so we have enough time to ask a few questions to our expert speakers. Gentlemen, thank you very much for supporting the conference. would like to start with uh, Andres. Andres Bohorquez, you are the fleet manager. You are the customer in this panel. Um, a first question to you, Andres. Um, the other two are specialists in telematics, in connected technology. Do you already today deploy connected technology and telematics for your LATAM fleet? And if so, where and why? You are still on. Hello, hello. Do you, sir, do you hear me? Yes. Yes. I have a, a connectivity problems. Have you heard the question? Can you repeat again, please? Yes. Uh, do you already have telematics in Latin America? And if so, where and why? Yes, of course. Uh, I have telematics in, in, in Latin America. Uh, I have uh, telematics in Peru, Mexico, Chile, Caribbean, and of course, Colombia. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, 900 cars with the telematics. Uh, it's very important. It's very important for us because we have to, we, we need the control of uh, drivers' habits and, and to control uh, cons uh, the fuel, the fuel that, that make the cars, the, that need the, to, to, to work with the cars and, and other, and other, and other to, and other, KPAs that we that we make for the reports every month. So telematics is very very important. In this moment, we have to we are looking for uh, some pro providers in, yes. in other in other countries. Okay, for very good. And um, we'd like to go to Juan Cardona of Geotap. Juan um, Geotap is of course a global telematics company. Um, how do you see the uptake of connected technology and for driver behavior, but also, I can assume, for safety in the LATAM region? Do you see that there is more and more appetite from companies to deploy connected technology in their fleet? For sure, Stephen. Um, th that is something that we see in Latin America. Uh, Geotab arrived into Latin America around seven years ago. And there was a challenge for us to, for the people to understand the benefits of the telematics. And as you mentioned, safety and at the same time, security, those are the two topics super important for the Latin customers now. So now that they, they understand that and big fleets are adopting uh, our solution and they see the, the benefit of that. So I think it, it's a huge opportunity for everybody to you know to use the telematics as one of their main tools to prevent accidents and of course um, save money in other matters like uh, routing or maintenance okay um fernando one of the topics of the this afternoon session was also related to trends and when we talk about trends we think about fluid electrification and mobility how do you see connected technology as an uh, some of a key pillar let's say if you would like to make your fleet more sustainable more green and electrified 
Yeah. So it's 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 a big step uh, in terms of driver behavior. Uh, we we start there. We believe uh, you can add technology to your fleet in many ways, but the driver behavior will determine things like fuel economy, uh, your impact in the environment. So we start there. We are working in increasing the functionality we have in terms of augment, uh, AI, uh, machine vision, and artificial intelligence. So that with new algorithms, with the information that we have from millions and millions of miles driven in the US, we can contribute in more ways to our customers. So what we're doing is basically uh, gathering information from our customers in terms of their needs, where they are going, and we will be adapting our technology to those needs to make sure that we evolve uh, around uh, the market needs. If it's electrification, if it is self-driving vehicles, if it is increasing security, reducing environmental impact, uh, increasing fuel efficiency, we believe uh, holding hands with our partners and our customers will get us where we need to be. Okay. Uh, Andres, uh, coming back to you, you already have telematics in uh, various countries in Latin America. What are the main results? I mean, can you give us some figures or results in terms of fuel efficiency, in terms of reduction of accidents and incidents, thanks to the telematics devices that you have implemented in the fleet of Aplus? Yes, Steven, of course. Uh, the most important is the save, save money, because uh, in, in the maintenance topics, we can we can see when the when the care have to do the maintenance, and another another topic is when when F, uh, full efficiency mm -hmm. and, and and the other is when when to the safe. Uh, some to save some okay do you hear me yes Hello? i can hear you okay can you hear us andres no okay perhaps you need to reconnect again i will continue with fernando and with uh, juan I think that's better. If Andres, you can reconnect again. And to the audience, if you have questions for our expert speakers, you can ask them via the chat. Um, Juan, um, knowing that some companies think about introducing telematics and connected technology, but perhaps they have some questions about how to implement telematics, how to select the right provider. Uh, can you give some advice in what criteria as a corporate fleet manager, you should look at if you are selecting connected technology for your fleet. It's it's a really good question because it's something that we you know have to have to deal daily with uh, our end customers. Um, basically, um, we in Geotab work as an advisor for them. Um, you know, to really to to help them to do the right investment in in the matter that they they want to improve. And um, second, it's uh, we have different kind of uh, uh, levels of cost depending on on their needs. And a part of that, uh, we can complement all their their needs or their strategy with our marketplace. In the marketplace, we have many 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 different kind of solutions that could be um you know a little bit more complex in terms mm -hmm. of the of the application of the technology but complex means that they have a 360 or full variety of different solutions around that that they can they can use to improve uh you know the efficiency of their fleet mm -hmm. um fernando are there countries in latin america where for legal reasons or for cultural reasons telematics is perhaps not yet the right thing to do because there is somehow 
a natural resistance within those countries towards connected technology and also in terms of data privacy, etc. Or are every or is every country in Latin America already well open to your technology? Yeah, so I'll answer that question from the perspective of video telematics and what we do. So, so generally speaking with video, there are a couple of things that we need to, to focus on. One is local legislation that has to do with, with data privacy, uh, because we can have uh, video of the driver. So that is, that is one concern. The other concern would be cultural. So you might have... Um, culture where being filmed as you drive is not really acceptable. So what we have done around that is we've developed a solution that is very configurable to meet the needs of each market. So for example, the uh, personal information privacy laws in Europe is quite different than it is in Brazil, for example. And we've made sure that our solution can be adapted to each of these markets. Uh, culturally, there's a couple of things we, we have done. One is basic training and enabling, right? If you train and enable the person, uh, the driver, uh, for this person to understand the benefit the video brings to them in terms of safety, security, analysis of a situation like an accident, it's usually much easier to implement. But in that case, when it comes to culture, we usually work with each customer to determine the best way to implement the solution in their operation, to make sure that we minimize these issues and we bring as much value as we can um, after we've already discussed, obviously, the, the local legislation and, and the needs for that solution. Okay. And based on your experience and what you just are telling us, uh, what are some of those countries where perhaps the reluctance is a bit bigger? So in Latin America in general, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't say there's countries that are different. I would say <clears throat> there are customers Okay. that uh, have different expectations. Uh, in general, the legislation is very similar. In some countries, it's implemented. Uh, and in some countries, it isn't. Uh, but one of the things that we, we definitely focus on is our customers' privacy policies. And that's where we see big differences, more than in terms of legislation and the geographies. Okay. Um, Juan Cardona of Geotap, there is a question in the chat from Anastasia Bogatikova, and it's related to fuel fraud. Um, the question is, is there such a problem as fuel fraud in Latin America? And we can extend a little bit the question. And if there is an issue of fuel fraud that can exist in Latin America, how can then connected technology help to tackle fuel fraud for sure there is a huge but huge problem of, of fuel leaking if we can call it that way in latin america so that's why in geotab we are paying a lot of attention on different solutions to to that helps visibility of the fleet through telematics there sorry there is some echo again it is, is it important you on this? to have control and traceability of the fleet I think it's telematics. No, it's okay. So yeah, no, what, what, okay. I was saying that there is a huge problem of, of fuel leaking here in Latin, in Latin America on fraud or fraud. And uh, in Geotab, we are taking a lot of attention on this and, you know, uh, provide uh, many, many solutions uh, in our platform. And again, uh, we have... Uh, uh resellers um, not resellers we have uh, partners that develop other solutions more uh um more than than the one that we use as, an, as a standard and at the same time we use fuel cards too that are linked to our platform to help to prevent those kind of uh, situations okay andres welcome again i will try again with you um, we were talking about fuel fraud. So there was a question from the audience. If there is fuel fraud in Latin America, and we know that there is a risk for fuel fraud uh, with employees in some countries, etc. How do you tackle the issue of possible fuel fraud? Of course, uh, we have... 
we have uh, that kind of problems within in, in this company but uh, we it's important for 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 a plus uh, it's important to have a control and trust traceability of the fleet so telematics and we uh, generate con the reports every week to see where is the or which are the the, the cars that can can do this this this, this with that or what car which cars have problems with these okay. topics okay and you are also using fuel cards so that you can verify the mileage driven and also the yes. fuel that is used yes we have a uh, uh, we have a uh, for fuel we have a platform platform and we program the platform with uh, the, 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 the the side of the or the time that we have the or the car go to the station and, and mm -hmm more like more two three times a week okay so you verify really the use of the fuel by car and by driver yeah okay i see um fernando uh, to continue on uh, fuel management and uh, fuel fraud uh, is the video telematics a good solution to help to counter fuel management and fuel fraud so if we if we separate uh, two things here, one fuel fraud and the other is fuel theft, and just differentiate those, video is very good at preventing theft, and it is very good at being able to evaluate the situation once it already happened. It is also a deterrent because if there is a camera pointing at the person, uh, it, it definitely will deter them if they know they're being filmed. So from the uh, fuel theft perspective, I think we bring a lot of value. I don't think we are a solution uh, that will prevent uh, a more complex type of fraud, like liters that are not liters or gallons that are not gallons or, or pouring fuel into some container. Uh, maybe in that case, we can video that and, and prevent it a little bit, but I think it's a great deterrent for fuel theft. Okay, to continue with Juan Cardona of Geotap, um, a question again from Anastasia. What if the devices fail to provide the correct info about, for example, fuel consumption? Is there a risk that your technology can also fail? And what is then the recommendation for the fleet manager? Well, one of the, the, the main uh, topics or the, the main uh, things that we highlight in Geotab is the quality of our devices. That is or the number one pillar that we have in the company, you know, to, to be sure that the, our devices didn't fail. And uh, second is super important installation. So uh, we are, we encourage our resellers and partners uh, in that matter. So those covering those things, uh, we can assure to the end customer that our devices will never fail. Um, second point pro probably will be the connectivity, but because of uh, the size of the memory of our device, we can assure to the customer that if they're in an area without coverage, uh, we can collect information for a month, basically. And when they turn back to a really good coverage area, we upload all the information into the into the system. So, knowing this, um, the customer can can be you know very satisfied with the service, and they can be sure that uh, we cover all the all, all their needs into the market. Okay, uh, Fernando. One of the elements, of course, that we sometimes see is that when we talk about connected technology, that there is also a risk for the so-called function creep. How do you go with that threat and what can fleet managers do to protect themselves? In, in, from our perspective, I mean, the information that we provide is 
the format and the type of information and when we provide it is determined by the fleet manager. Mm -hmm. So I don't see uh, very much a risk of the information not being used for the purpose it was it was configured and created. Um, we have safety measures in place to avoid that. So in general, I would say, again, it, it depends on how we configure and prepare the solution for each customer. It is very rare that the information we gather and provide is not used for the specified purpose uh, that was designed. Okay. And for you, Juan Cardona, because Geotab is well known for its, let's say, open marketplace. Mm -hmm. So you work with, I don't know how many partners in, yeah, in a quite, not an informal setup, but okay, those are partnerships. Yes. So you could say that there is somehow a risk of function creep with all the data that is shared, etc. What is your answer to the fleet managers here in the audience? Well, that, that, that is another good point here to discuss because um, in Jutta, we, we collect more than 40 billion data points a day. So imagine managing all that, that information at the same time. So it, it's a challenge. It's a big challenge for us. But um, the good thing is our, our service uh with all the data can provide them all the information that they 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 need and talking about the partners that work with us in all the different solutions yes we have more than 200 uh, partners that help us to develop more and more solutions around around our platform and at the same time all resellers they develop their their own solution and even some hardware too that works perfectly well with with, uh, with geotap and um we certify the, the their uh you know software and their hard hardware in the um, to work with uh, with us so everything is certified that there is not going to be a, any problem um with a uh, new solutions okay again a question from the audience uh, about your devices can you, as a driver, also disconnect the device? And if so, can the fleet manager immediately see online, or I don't know, is he alerted that some of the drivers are not playing the game in the right way? We start with Fernando. Yeah, so this one this one is great because it's, it's a very open question, but... Let me put it this way. Number one, if, if you're a technology company and you're not preventing these types of behaviors, you're just not in contact with reality, right? Technology has to be designed for the human that is going to be uh, using it. So we start from that premise. Now, device tampering is common. There is no way you can prevent someone from destroying a device. What you can do is, if that device is disconnected, it is destroyed, uh, the power is disconnected, in our specific case, the cameras are covered, you can generate an alert and have that as an event and show the video to the person managing the fleet so they can take care of that event and see what happened. But preventing a piece of technology from being destructed on purpose is very, very difficult unless you install a barrier between the person and that device. So our approach is technological. We have a soft approach. We uh, generate events that will allow a fleet manager to take care of things like devices not working, being disconnected, being locked, being tampered. Okay. And for you, Juan, with Geotap, is it a little bit in the same direction as what Fernando just explained? Yeah, exactly the same as Fernando just explained. Um, um, we we can say that we try or we recommend uh, to do the installation, uh, you know, in the in a place that will be a difficult access to to be manipulate the device. But we we cannot, uh, you know, assure that nobody is, is going to manipulate the the or device and immediately is disconnected. The the fleet manager uh, receive an alert. Um, another question is about, of course, the return on investment of connected technology. How big does a fleet needs to be to have a good return on investment? How many cars 
should you have in your fleet or should be equipped? Is five cars already enough? Is 100 cars enough? Should it be 1,000? Juan? It doesn't matter the size of the fleet because we have customers with 30, 40,000 vehicles and we have customers that have only two. So it doesn't matter. Uh, what really matters is uh, the, the benefit of the, of the technology that they are looking for. You know, so in, in that case, uh, as I, I, you know, mentioned at the beginning of, of this uh, session, I said, we are here to be as an advisor for them and to try to help them in the best way to increase uh, the efficiency and decrease the cost of operation. Fernando? So, yeah, I, I would repeat what Juan said. I think we, I can give you an example of a large fleet where we don't add value and where there's no ROI, which is the other side of this equation, right? Let's assume there's a customer that is only interested in accidents, doesn't care about anything else, and is willing to go uh, and uh, retrieve a memory uh, from a camera that was installed in that truck that was filming 24-7. Filming so that is a very low value solution where Lytx does not compete. In those customers that want prevention, training, information about other events, uh, I could justify a use case for one vehicle for 100,000. It wouldn't be much of a difference. Now, why is there more value for larger fleets? Well, as you grow your fleet, there's more effort in managing so many events. So the fact that we have a centralized platform simplifies the process of managing a larger fleet. So as you grow in the fleet, your ROI will be a little bit better just because of the simplification in managing and the fact that you can have multiple users managing the same fleet if, if necessary through uh, a system that is integrated and is central. Okay. Um... Juan, if you were a corporate fleet manager, so if you were at the other side, okay, so you were the customer, and you would reach out to a telematics specialist like Geotap or Litix, what would be the KPIs you would evaluate the telematics company on? Well, number one is, uh, you know, the the... The efficiency of the service is number one. Number two, it's uh, the quality of their product. Number three, um, the platform is is if the platform is open and I can add more solutions around it. For example, uh, a Salitic solution that you know uh, is a fantastic partner with uh, with Geotab. So. Those kind of things are the ones that I will be looking for. Imagine if I, you know, I have a 10 vehicles and those uh, drive all around the country, for example, here in Chile, and uh, we have a, a technology issue or a quality issue. Imagine try to replace uh, one of the devices in the south of Patagonia. So I, I want to be sure that everything will be working well. Okay. Fernando, a question from the chat. How can 5G have a, pos a positive impact on your solutions and on your business? Do you see that the 5G development will increase also innovation in your solutions? For us, it will be a big step forward and a positive one because we deal with video. So more bandwidth, will allow us to increase the quality of the video, the frequency of the video, the number of cameras that will be broadcasting at the same time, the ability to have a live view of these cameras anywhere faster. So when you're dealing with video, bandwidth is one of the most critical components in terms of performance. And uh, we are looking forward to in the future having a 5G version of our product that does things that the technology can currently do, but we are limited by uh, the cellular networks in, in Latin America and other countries. Mm -hmm. But uh, I thought that in Brazil, for example, they were now examining uh, to 
how do you say it, to license the 5G network. Is that correct? In several countries, they have already been licensed and they're in the process of licensing. I don't know the specifics for Brazil. In reality, for telematics, because you will be using a carrier's SIM card or connection on your device, uh, you don't really have to worry about that. Once the network is available, you can connect your devices to that network and take advantage of that bandwidth. Okay. Juan, do you want to add something about 5G and the positive impact it could have for you and your business and for the fleet manager probably? No, as Fernando said, you know, um, we are supporting the this new improvement of, of the technology. And, you know, if uh, as more as more 5G networks uh, will be available in, in Latin America, more services like, like Litex will be more popular into, into the market, you know, because we can add more and more features around it. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about another um, future technology. Probably for you is already a uh, common uh, sense. That is artificial intelligence and machine learning. In what way will that enhance the capabilities of your solutions and also the possibilities for the customer? We start again with Fernando. So we currently have machine vision and artificial intelligence in our camera in terms of driver behavior. Um, we have five algorithms that analyze driver behavior and uh, can alert things like smoking, driving, distraction and fatigue, uh, seatbelt use, um, and food and drink. Um, in our other, not the surf site, but the Lytics side of the business, the, the larger product we have, we are already detecting red lights, uh, people on the street, uh, tailgating, things like that. So one of the things that will happen is as we evolve, we will be adding more events through machine vision, through the cameras, and running those images that were captured by the machine through an AI algorithm to generate events that originally would have to be categorized by a human, and that took time, right? So now we're running these AI uh, algorithms in the camera, live, in the truck, without the need for connectivity. And all we will do is add more and more uh, capabilities to the AI machine that runs on the camera so that we can do more automatically without needing human interference. Okay. Um, Juan, if we look a little bit at the fleet customer, uh, you have many, uh, not only in Latin America, but across the globe. What are the common mistakes that you see with corporate fleets when they go out to tender a connected technology or telematics solution? And even more importantly, when they would like to implement telematics in their fleet. What are the common mistakes that you see? And then after that, we can talk about the advice that you have to tackle those mistakes. Well, I, I think the, the, the main concern, it's uh, that probably they think that if they have a telematic solution like a Geotap, uh, we will solve all their, all their problems. But yes, we can solve all the problems if, if, they really pay attention to the information that bring them we bring to them so um as we said you can not manage something that you can not measure so here we are given to them the tools to measure and to you know to make uh, clever or smart decisions around that so that's the, the main point that they have to understand that they have the tools they have the information and you know use it for that okay do you have the same feeling, Fernando, that sometimes you see that customers perhaps think that already having the solution is enough to solve the problems and that they think that with that everything is already done? I think, I, yes, I, I agree. I would add to that. I think in many cases, uh, success has not been very well defined for the project. Yep. So one of the things that we want to do in, in a 
pre-sales environment is definitely ask our customers, uh, what is success to you? What are you looking for? What are you looking from this solution? And then with them through time, track the progress of those metrics we determined before implementing the project. Because it's, it's again, what is success? What's the definition? What are we measuring? As Juan said, if we don't measure it, you know, we don't have the numbers, we can't measure it, we don't know if we're successful. So determining what success looks like from the beginning is critical um, to any technological solution. Mm -hmm. um, Juan, do you have the impression that more and more a corporate fleet manager also in Latin America needs to be a data manager instead of a vehicle manager? Not necessarily, not necessarily, because... Um... If our platform for our geota platform is very easy to understand and very easy to you know to to create reports we can we can do more, more than 1000 reports based on the information that we collect and um there is not necessarily to be a it guy or a data manager you know uh the one who who manage if um who manage the, the the solution or the platform? You know, could be somebody that really understands basics on the technology, and again, we can drive them to be more efficient in their job with their job. Okay, and um, Fernando, um, are the customers? It's a little bit continuing on what we were just discussing. Are they sophisticated enough to use efficiently what is offered to them? And do they know what to do with the data? Or do you uh, have some kind of doubts sometimes? So, so let me approach this from two angles. First angle is if, if a technology company has a customer that is not sophisticated enough for their solution, they were definitely responsible in selling that solution. So let's, let's begin from that perspective. Um, if your solution as a technology company is not for the customer, you should not be selling it. There's, there's that to start with. The second thing is, I think Juan nailed it when he said, you know, the platforms are simple enough to where we can provide something to a customer that you can, would consider is a beginner in terms of technology, but there's enough there to satisfy a, a fleet manager that loves to analyze data and wants to get into the details. So a good technological solution should cater to different types of customers and should not be sold to those customers that don't fit that definition. Okay. Juan, on average, how much of the data is effectively being used by corporates and what can be done to further improve the use of the data that becomes available through your platform? Well, it's... Um... It's a fantastic question because um, um, we encourage them to use all the information that is, is available for them. And a, a part of that, we offer to, to, the, to the customers agnostic data from all the more than two and a half million vehicles that we have connected in the world, you know, to understand how the, all the other countries behave or, or different companies behave around the information. Of course, everything is confidential, but that information is available for them. Okay. Um, Fernando, what would be your main tip to corporate fleet managers that just start their journey in Latin America and they want to sell connected technology internally to their stakeholders? I think the best thing you can do is have a conversation uh, with Juan or myself. We can provide a lot of information of success stories from other customers that already have implemented the solution. Um, we can even have you have chats with other companies that look like you are similar, have similar needs. So you can get a, a good example of what is going on out there. Um, that is the best way to look at it. And then just definitely do a needs analysis and see if, if the needs are clear, if you are at this point, a good candidate for one of these solutions um, and try to gather as much information as you can to get started. Now, if you want to sell it internally, um, use an ROI model, show how that investment will have a return in X number of months or years. And I think that's, that's the best place to begin. It's where most of our customers begin. Mm -hmm. uh, Juan, and where to begin? 
For example, do you begin in the countries where you have, let's say, the weakest or most challenging drivers or where, or where safety is the biggest issue? Or do you say, no, start with a country where it's quite easy to implement telematics and use that as sort of a lever for the rest of the countries in Latin America? What would be your advice? Well, uh, it depends. It depends because, uh, yeah, where, where it's uh, easier to implement the technology, you know, you, you can use that as an example. For, for the others. But at the same time, in different countries, uh, for example, if we talk about Brazil, Colombia, or Mexico, where the traffic is, is is very difficult, you know, those will be a, a challenge, but at the same time, we'll, we'll see immediate results. Okay. Another question for you, Juan. Do you have integrated individual driver scorecards, for example, which show their scores in comparison to others. Is that possible via your technology? For sure. Yeah, we have a um, um, driver identification. So in, in this case, uh, we encourage the, the customers to use that not as a threat for, for, the, for their employees. It's, it's more user, usage as a tool to uh to have a better drivers more professional drivers and the idea here is not compare a good driver versus a bad driver is to you know to have a um, same level of uh professionalism between the, the employees okay uh fernando um we know of course that litix and geotap are also partners and um, if i'm a customer do i need to take both of you together? Not necessarily. Geotap and Litex always together? Not always. Not always. We, we have customers that are not common customers, but we do have an integrated solution that brings a lot more value if you have both. Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen. We are going to close this Q&A session. I think that we had a great engaging session with quite a lot of questions. Um, in the chat, uh, there is also uh, a demand to further be in contact with you. So, Fernando and Juan, if you can read the chat, Anastasia Bogatikova would like to extend the discussion with both of you. So, Probably it's good that you can also reach out to her afterwards. And Anastasia, you can, of course, also visit Litex and Geotap uh, in the expo and uh, probably also via uh, the connection that you can make with the attendees. So you see on the screen that there is also the people button and probably there you will find also the contact details of Juan Cardona and Fernando, and you can send a quick message to them. Okay. Thank you very much, Fernando. Thank you, Juan. Also, thank you for the support. And ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for our uh, closing panel discussion with our two founding partners of this Fleet Latam conference on main stage. So not in this session, but on main stage, where we will talk about winning strategies in Latin America with Geotap, and with ALD Automotive. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.